Donald Trump's campaign is confident he will get more than enough delegates for that Republican nomination. The Washington Post obtaining a memo to Trump supporters suggesting that he will end up with 1,400 delegates. Right now, Trump is at 845. His advisors project he'll make up the rest with more primary wins over the next month and unbound delegates at the convention. How will that happen? Sarah Huckabee Sanders, senior advisor for the Trump team, live in Little Rock. And Sarah, good morning to you. And nice to have you on our program here. Thanks for having me on. Good morning, Bill. 1,400 is more than a lot of people expect. Where in the country do you get to that number starting now? Well, I think we saw some of that starting to happen just this week with huge win in New York. And I think moving into next week, we're going to see uh, equal wins, big wins uh, across the Northeast in five different states. And then moving into California, Indiana, I expect Trump to do extremely well in both of those places. And I think you make up the difference in the unbound delegates. You know, we've been very clear. We think we'll get to 1237 uh, on the very first ballot. And then I think you have uh, a lot of unbound delegates, uh, I think roughly over 200, that I think will not support somebody who's already lost at that point and will be voting for Donald Trump uh, at the convention. Is the Trump team recruiting or wooing or selling itself to, not in the physical sense, um, to <laughs> these delegates to attract them now? Absolutely. We're not just going after delegates, but we're going after every American. The Trump campaign has been focused since day one on getting votes from every single person they can, uh, from every demographic. And if you're a delegate, even better. So absolutely, uh, so we're completely me, focused on getting all me, the votes needed. I need an example of what you're doing with these delegates who may be on the fence. You know, I think that in large part we're taking the message that Donald Trump has been winning with uh, this entire election cycle. I mean, most people didn't think he'd ever make it out of the summer, and he has. And it's been on a message of primarily economic and national security. And those are the big things that keep people up at night. They want to know, are they going to have a job? And are they going to live in a safe country? And so we're taking that message. We're taking it to those people. And we're also making the contrast that he's the only person in this race that can beat Hillary Clinton. Uh, I get it. She's so the that's, ultimate Washington insider. Yeah, that's and a he's broad, the ultimate outsider. That's a broad <laughs> message, but nothing specifically in terms of outreach or phone calls or any more dialogue, specifically with delegates. Is that what I... Come to understand. Well, I, I do think that there is absolutely, I, and we've uh, expanded our team over recent weeks uh, to help focus specifically on the delegate count and the delegate math. And that team is working diligently to contact uh, and, you know, courts, delegates directly, as well as uh, America as a whole. Okay, now this from that memo. Uh, quoting now, the cruise spin machine produces more lies than anything else. Our projections call for us to accumulate over 1,400 delegates and thus a first ballot nomination win in Cleveland. So we'll see, we'll see whether or not that's the case. Another topic now. Uh, Trump was on NBC this morning and um, he was asked whether or not he would support raising taxes on the wealthy. He said he would support that. Now, in the past, he has also argued that the amount of taxes that he pays toward the government is, he, he tries to keep it at the lowest level possible. Now, how does he square um, what appears to be two different representations about his views on taxes? Why would he say today during a Republican nomination fight that he would support raising taxes on anyone, Sarah? You know, I haven't had a chance to see that specific clip, but what I do know is that Donald Trump is extremely focused on the American worker, and that's something that's been completely ignored, uh, not just this cycle, but in this administration, and frankly, in the Republican leadership, is putting a direct focus on American workers and helping empower those people to do better. And so I think that that's, you know, clearly his broad overall message, and that's where we have to look at. Uh, and again, I think you draw that contrast with Hillary Clinton, she wants to raise taxes on everybody. And uh, Bernie Sanders wants to give everybody everything for free. So when you compare where Donald Trump is to where uh, his potential Democrat opponents are, I think the choice is extremely clear that he's the only person that's fighting for just, American workers yeah, just one more and point uh, can on this. help get our economy moving. Do you know how he defines wealthy? Uh, I, I, I don't, but my guess is that he has a pretty good understanding of uh, is it one percent? Is it two percent? What is it? 
You, you know, that's a question I think you'd have to ask him. I, I don't. I haven't had the chance to have that conversation to uh, know where where that falls. Okay. Uh, I do know he probably considers himself to fall into that category. Uh, I think you're right about that. Sarah, thanks, and come on back, okay? Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Thank you, live Bill. in Little Rock. Nice to have you.